Hello everybody, how's it going? This is Jason from Story Basilisk. We're back in to working on our Twitch chat chess game today. Um, I'll probably start with an overview of what we did already. We did already spend a couple of hours in a previous stream last week working on this. And then I'll kind of go through all of the code, add some comments and probably clean up and refactor it slightly as well. Um, there is one tiny change I have already made since last week's stream, which is I've added a bit of CSS to kind of reorganize the elements on this page. Um, and I, I can also kind of give you a quick demo here of how this works right now. So ultimately this is going to be hooked up to Twitch chat, but right now just to test it, I've got a little text box where I can kind of manually throw in uh, commands for this here. So I can say something like, if this pawn is at a2, I can say I want to go to a3, and it will push it forward like that. So there's some debug information down here about all the legal moves that pawn had and stuff like that, so it will check for uh, illegal moves. So right now it's Black's turn, so if I try and move b2 pawn, that obviously won't work. Not this piece's turn. Um, or and then if I try and do something crazy like b7, meaning this one here, going, I don't know, all the way down here. We also note down here that that's an illegal move. So I can push this, so pawns can also move two pieces, two spaces at the beginning, so that's also, that logic is also implemented. We also have something which can show us all of the legal moves of a piece, which is kind of handy. So I can say a3 question mark, and it will highlight, this is a3, it will highlight all the tiles that it's allowed to go to. So you know, I can push it forwards like that. Um, all the pawn movement stuff is also implemented, so I can say I'm not great at following these things on the grid 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so B5 question mark. Yeah, so it's options are moving forwards or taking here. So taking also kind of works, so 5, 2, 8, 4, yeah, there we go. Uh, and all of the basic movement patterns are kind of implemented, so you know, I can take my Whose turn is it actually? Um, B1 question mark. Yeah, so I can show the kind of legal moves for this knight and all of that stuff works. And it also accounts for blocking. So let's say I move this forwards. And then I want to say, where can my bishop here move to? It kind of accounts for things being blocked by the pieces and things it's allowed to take and stuff like that. Yeah, so the basic movement's in there. We're obviously drawing the board and the pieces. We're keeping track of where everything is. We allow you to move the pieces by some text input here. And we do a basic check for legal moves. So this right now doesn't cover some of the more fancy stuff like castling and pawn promotion. And there's no check checks right now. So you can do weird stuff like put yourself in check or checkmate. You know, it doesn't even detect checkmate or anything like that at all right now. So that's something that we'll add in. Um, yeah, and this change here was just to kind of move this text box down below the board. Previously, it was off to the right, so it was wasting a load of space. Um, yeah, so first let's do a quick sort of inventory of the code here, if you like. Switch to this mode. So I no longer need to edit the HTML. We can get a go through this and also like break it down probably into some separate files to sort of organize things a bit more nicely. So. We're using a framework called uh, p5.js here, um, which requires us, or lets us define three main functions. So the first one is preload, which is where we load all of our assets. This is just loading other images in. So let's at least comment that. There's no asset for the board because we just draw that using shapes, using squares and stuff. Got some spam bots in the chat, let's. <laughs> Let's nuke that. Uh, how does this work? Boom, there we go. Um, yeah, so that's just preloading the assets. We have this thing. This is kind of hacky and this won't always be there. This is, let's even leave it at some hacky testing code, which displays, uh, sorry, not here's well displays, it displays an input box and triggers moves this the input right so this line here is just kind of creating this box and giving it a certain size and then 
ultimately this will be fed through from like monitoring the Twitch chat in the form of a bot or something. But right now all it does is like, so a move is like uh, a from coordinate and a to coordinate, right? So it's like A1 to E1, for example. So it knows that when you put four characters in there, then it might be a move. So it tries to kind of pull that out. There's some little helper functions here for doing that, which will take a string like A1 and actually map that to some kind of coordinates that the game uses internally. Uh, so kind of in chess notation, we have like A, B, C, D, E, F, like along this way. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, to kind of label the kind of rows and columns or ranks and files. We just convert A1 into like zero, zero. This is one, zero. This is one, one, two, two. Uh, two, three, and so on. So a more natural coordinate system that kind of matches up with the arrays and stuff we're storing this data with. So that's all that does for us. We call this make move thing, which is where the actual move validation logic and stuff goes in there. Um, there's another little test here for if they've entered something with a question mark at the end, like A1 question mark, then it will show. It just kind of figures out the legal moves from that piece. Um, so the first thing I kind of want to do... Okay, yeah. So as well as creating this, we kind of define... Define... Data about... Legal moves for each piece type. Um, and this is kind of a long-handed way to do this, but it's also makes it very convenient to actually figure out all of the legal moves in any given position on the board. So a knight, for example, it's basically what we have here is a list of offsets. So if you have a knight, it can go one across and two up, so that's there. It can go like two across and one up, so that's that's there. And this is kind of just listing all of those out. Whereas a bishop can kind of go in four diagonal directions. But you notice these things are all kind of chained into one array. So all of the like upright moves are kind of chained into one array. So like this move, this move, this move, this move, and this move. Uh, and what it does is it, the code which sort of finds legal moves in a position will go through each little, we call this a chain, we go through each offset in the chain. And as soon as it gets blocked, it will stop considering the rest of them. So this is how we deal with the fact that a knight can like immediately jump to any of these tiles and it doesn't really matter what's in between whereas a bishop kind of has a string or a chain of moves it can go along but as soon as it hits something then you know whether it's its own piece or the edge of the board or it like takes a piece that's kind of as far as it can go right so that's what prevents this bishop actually I can put in t1 question mark that's what allows the bishop to go this way but kind of blocks it off here uh, if we didn't do this then it would probably realize this move is legal but then still consider these ones so we have this little kind of bespoke little format, which allows us to specify these things. Rook's very similar to Bishop. We just specify like up, down, left, right chains. Um, for the Queen, what I've done is I've just shoved all of the Bishop and Rook moves into one thing, because a Queen basically moves like a Rook and a Bishop combined. Uh, and then the King, we just have, um, you know, all of the neighboring squares that it can move to, like one square away either like on the compass or like diagonally. Um, I could probably have used code to like generate some of these chains to be honest, but I feel like just having it explicitly listed here once is okay. Like chess is a fairly well-defined game and this is kind of a hacky project anyway. So given that this will never have to change, I'm quite happy with just hard coding these in because it's just pretty simple and plain and direct and there's really not much to go wrong there. So yeah, let's start moving some of this stuff out into separate files. I think I first want to move some game logic stuff out here. So some of these variables like piece moves we go here. You can also pull some of this logic out as well. I feel like that's really where it belongs. Really clean this up somewhat. Uh, there's some drawing logic. Let's also maybe start putting that out separately. So 
let's take draw pieces out here. Pull that out. What does draw pieces do? It kind of just iterates over the board, which is kind of just a two-dimensional array here. If it finds something, it will look up the relevant name of the image for that, and it will um, just draw it at the relevant position. There's also this handy utility function, which takes a final rank position, or rather a coordinate where this would be like 0, 0, and it returns on this canvas in pixels where that actually is. So I'm also going to pull that out into my rendering thing. Okay. What else do we have? We also have a draw board function somewhere. Okay, I'm going to pull that out as well. Kind of leave that belongs above this. It makes more sense to me. How do we draw a board? Um, we basically fill with the light color. Again, these colors are defined somewhere, which I can probably pull out here. The art piece images kind of belong to rendering as well, so we will also put that there. Rendering, sorry. Yeah, so we fill the background with the light color, and then we just go through every dark square we draw a square of the dark color. So we draw a square here, and here, and here, and so on. Again, there's another helper which tells us if, if a square is a dark square or not. Where are you? Yeah, this was all kind of thrown together in one file, and I definitely am not a fan of that, so I'm going to try and pull it out. Where did that go? Did I get it already? Oh, you know what? It's that little console box, like obscure stuff. Yeah, it's at the bottom, hiding away. Tripped me up a few times last time. So it's dark square. I, I think it's actually rather. I was debating is that game logic or rendering? I think that. Okay, there's some game things to do with dark squares, right? Like this is the dark square. Bishop, it always stays on the dark squares. But the game logic doesn't really need to know about that, right? The fact that it starts on this square and it can only move in a certain way does mean it only ever sits on a dark square, but the game doesn't really care about that as such. So I feel like it's kind of just a visual thing, really. There's not a fundamental difference between light and dark square. Just a property of where the pieces start and what their legal moves are, I guess. Uh, let me check I haven't terribly broken any anything with this. Uh, it's gone and probably overwritten my HTML. That's actually very annoying. Um, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll leave it in this mode because it, I guess this mode just hides HTML and probably regenerates it for you, but I think I want to put that back. So, um, this thing, so it's going to be. There are some weird display things set by default on the body which cause it to be put up here, so I'm just going to fix that. Ooh. Ah, you know what? I should include all this other stuff. I guess this is the downside of doing this manually. In logic and rendering. And there we go. That looks a bit nicer to me. A little bit of padding. We have our nice box down here. Cool. So let's actually put some of this preload stuff. Is it dirty if I just move this whole thing into rendering? Maybe not. I mean, in theory, there could be like audio related stuff in here, but right now that's not something we're doing. So I'm kind of OK with doing this. And let's add some more comments. OK. 
Okay. So we'll help us down here. Yeah, last room was filled with like me spending five seconds every time to remember which way around file and rank were. In, you know, in terms of like X and Y. Um, okay. I mean, I almost don't feel the need to comment this. <laughs> Square, there we go. Okay, all good so far. That's nicely packed away. How much smaller has our thing got? There's still a load of board logic stuff on here. So, another thing I'd like to do is um, this is this is way cleaner. Um, this reset board, I've got like a global board thing. I think I want to just have in my game logic, maybe like a, um, like a create board. So rather than just doing this, I'm going to uh, just actually return it. And then I'll just kind of store that in a variable. So let's return the board like that. What does this do? It just creates an 8x8 array. I'm sure there's a more idiomatic, faster way to do this in JavaScript. I'm not really a JS dev by trade. Uh, and then we just kind of put the light and dark pieces in place. Um, yep, and then we just put the pawns in front. I mean, again, this could be made slightly more succinct. I could, probably wouldn't need to duplicate both these blocks, but who cares? It's only there once. I've written it now. It just sits there. Never to be worried about again, hopefully. That returns the board. So we also have some other stuff related to the game state, like, so we have the board and we have whose turn is it. Um, so first of all, this should be a separate thing. It should probably be constant. I didn't use any comp stuff, which I kind of feel bad about. So I'm thinking I maybe want to wrap board and active turn up into like uh, a game state kind of object because when this goes into Twitch, we'll also want to track like um, what are the names in chat of the light and dark players and so on. So I think I'll actually do just do a create game with. something like this and then say you return something like mm, board is going to be new board active turn it's going to be light Yeah. I also think I want to do keep track 
something which would be nice and which I may actually put in before we do the special moves is some nicer UI. So it would be cool to have show player names, show active turn somehow. Right now there's no way to tell if it's light or dark's turn. And also show captured pieces would be kind of cool. So yeah, let's plan to do that. So let's also create little arrays for these. Which is going to start off empty, of course. That's what we need. Cool. By the way, I'm using just object literals all over the place because I don't know, because I, <laughs> because I feel like it. Again, I'm not really a JavaScript dev, so I should probably be using some ES6 classy stuff, but I don't, honestly don't care too much about that right now. Um, so rather than having boards, I'm going to have game state, and I'm going to say, rather than reset board, I'm going to say equals create game. Fills and things like that. So then that gets passed through here. I think there's somewhere later on we do this. Oh, yeah, so also when I draw the board. I kind of want to pass it in here rather than well I guess draw board has no parameters but draw all pieces on the board um, yeah because there's no longer just like a big static variable I could have reached into like the static game state to put it out but that feels a bit too dirty even for me so Game state, create a new game state like that. There's something eventually which checks if the game is won, which also would reset the board. So, oh no, that never happens. Okay, makes sense. Um, cool. So I've probably missed some stuff. Uh, And say list of moves. This by piece. There is okay, so technically it's not filtering out everything, right? So um and I was having a little think about later on when we get to like detecting check with this fancy stuff. I wonder, I think at this stage I don't want to yet filter out moves that would put you into check. Uh, maybe it's at the wrong time to be saying this, but I'm thinking, okay, so at certain point to tell if a king's in check, we need to know, is it within the line of sight of any other piece, right? Um, right now this get legal moves effectively gives you every tile that's in the line of sight of any piece. So I could use this to figure out if anything's targeting the king, right? I can go through every piece. And I say if any of the legal moves of my opponent's pieces contain my king's position, then it means that they are they have eyes on the king. But if I filtered out um Okay, I'm gonna need to draw this because this is gonna get too complicated otherwise. Okay, let's Take a look at this. Okay. So my thought is if um, you could have situations where let's ignore some of the other pieces. Let's say I have a king here. No, or I have a king like here. I have a rook. Here. I have a bishop here. 
which is light, I'm going to denote it by a circle. Then I have my own king here. I shouldn't have used the border stuff on it already. Anyway, so right now this king is in check, right? Because this bishop has eyes on it. But the bishop can't actually move to take it because it's pinned. But we should still consider this king kind of in check. So if I filtered out this move from the bishop's legal moves too early, then it, I'd need another way to figure out give me all the things that something targets. So I think I want to have that filtering be a separate stage so that for the purposes of seeing which pieces are under attack, I can um, just use this function. Also, for example, if you're in check, then none of your other pieces moves are legal unless they would break the check, right? So if my king's in check here, then I can't move a pawn. And again, I'd rather do that filtering out separately. I'd want to, at the first stage, say, oh, yeah, moving the pawn forwards is legal, that's fine. And then filter it out by saying, oh, actually, that move would put or leave you in check. So it's legal by virtue of that rule. of a longer side there but hopefully that makes sense so i'm going to pull this out to game logic as well uh, and i also want to yeah so also it doesn't filter out moves which are illegal because it's not your turn for example if that's kind of out of the remit of this I kind of want to pass the board in here. So there's this get piece at thing, which I'm also going to have to pull in here. And I think that will also care about the board. I need to update all of the references there. Get legal moves, there was also get the piece at, right? Oh, you know what? They should also be parameterized by board, I believe. Or even by game state. Basically just a bunch of refactoring here. So this is capturing, right? So this is how something the actual move happens. So I feel like I want to quickly update this to detect a capture. say if if captured piece exists then um okay i'm already redeciding a decision i made earlier i think i want to have this this because it will require less branching and I can just switch based on some string later on. Um, OK, 
Okay. One thing that's now I'm thinking, is, does this mean pieces captured by the light player, or light pieces which have been captured? Um. Uh, I think I'm going to do... Pieces... Dot. Color. Um, I think I'm just going to do the type of the piece. I don't need the whole like data structure for it, I just need the name. All it's going to be for is some UI stuff later on anyway. So. That's good to me. Search thing is weird, I can't something weird with the CSS, I can't see it. Okay, I've almost certainly broken some stuff. This can also be pulled out to game logic. I have hard-coded number 8 in a few places, but I'm kind of cool with that. Um, <laughs> if you're making a more flexible system for different chess variants, then maybe you'd want to change that, but... There's one magic number on my go that's kind of that one, but... No. Okay, almost certainly something's broken now. Let's take a look. Ooh. This is very weird. Um, game logic to this. 24 Hmm So I bet this ID type thing is throwing some junk in here Very weird. Okay, it's doing some weird instrument tracing or something, so maybe I need to have the order differently to make sure that's defined. Okay. P2 to A4. Ooh. 49, something strange happening here. Where are we? So the board is not defined for some reason. Did I just put board? Game state not board. Okay, so make move didn't have game state passed in. So probably this should also be put into game logic. I'm wondering if there's any fancy other stuff we do. No, at some point this may need to notify other bits of the code that like a check happened or something. Um, so maybe there'd be other stuff mixed in with there, but for now, probably don't have much problem with that.
But once again, I probably didn't even pass in the game state. Uh, let me move. a bit of internal stuff that maybe shouldn't be here but it's kind of just a debug thing anyway so I'm okay with this reaching in checking the board and calling these internal things directly for now at least hmm you know what I bet what that loop protect is is it's trying to detect infinite loops and stop the IDE from crashing um I don't care, it still works. Um, that's a problem in this kind of thing, right? Like you can set this to auto run when it, as you're typing and if you accidentally put in an infinite loop, the whole UI locks up. So I'm, I'm guessing that's what that loop protecting is. You know, you can get all sorts of tricky bugs when the tool you're using is like secretly um, uh, yeah. Yeah, that if the stuff you're using is secretly injecting other code in there, but what are you going to do? Okay. Let's add some additional UI, so. UI passing in the game state. So first of all, actually, I think we are going to want to make Okay, I'm thinking we can just add two extra rows, like the same scale as the... As this for like UI beneath there. Kind of funky, but should be okay. Yeah, so let's actually change this to draw a rectangle instead of filling the background. Draw a rectangle from So from the center, and filling the size, okay, that seems to work. So we've now got a bit more space in the canvas where we can add some player specific stuff. So let me draw the UI, let us do something like text, how did this work, pick up the reference, text. So we do text size that's okay, so we do the string and the coordinates. There's probably a mode about alignment, so I'm curious what default alignment is. It'd be handy for me if I could specify it like the bottom left corner of the text. In this case I think. See what the default is. Default. Uh, let's just type something in there and see what happens. So I'm going to say dot player names light at nine.
something like this. Let's see how this looks. Make sure we actually call it as well. Interesting. Okay, so. Okay, that is horrible color, horrible font, horrible size. Let's fix all of that, all of that crap. So, I want to call text align. Aha, text align left baseline will probably do what we want. So, text align. Left baseline. Probably want. I think it's no stroke, and then fill black. Should we say? fiddling around to find something that looks good here. Chin uh. butt. Yeah, there we go. So this can change from zero to uh I'm gonna do times one so it's clear that it's intended to be like an offset. I mean that's totally redundant, but to me this makes it clearer than just saying grid size. If I said times two, it would mean two cells across. Yeah, I feel that's a style thing, but I like doing it this way. Okay. So now we have our little like that, and I can now draw cool. Um Let's, we can also use this, I think, to indicate um, like who's active. So we can do something like if what do we call that? Active term. Then so what I'm doing is I'm adding a bit of alpha here to the thing that we draw. And I'll also make sure to reset that at the end. in P5. Tint. There's a shorthand. Wonder why this didn't appear to do anything.
Hmm. Interesting. So I guess I could do this instead with text color. Strange, what's going on there? Oh, okay. I know exactly what's happening. <laughs> so something weird happens. See if you can notice this maybe as I refresh it, watch a little bit of weird animation happening here. You see them fade in? It's because I was never clearing this section, so even though they had alpha, they were getting drawn like over the top of each other. So what I first need to do is actually fill in this part of the screen with like white, I think. Or what I can do when I draw is I can actually draw the background in like that so that it gets kind of effectively cleared. Aha. Okay, apparently that shorthand did not like. Fresh. Um, you know, we could also do the same thing with the text as well, so it becomes it's kind of signified both ways. Again, this is duplicated. It should probably be done, be done in some kind of loop or something. Uh, is that very clear? I don't know. Um, <laughs> so A2 to A4, and it switches over. Actually, kind of the way around there. Okay, that's pretty clear to me. So A2 to A4. Nice. So, showing the plane names, showing the active turns. Let's now show active pieces. I'm going to have them stacking up, I think, from the right. So it's less likely to like collide with the player name and they'll be nicely kind of aligned with each other. And I feel like I should factor this out into a loop or color of light dark. The only thing that really differs here is this. So I'm going to say let nine. I'm going to call this in. Color, 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 times, okay, should be a little wee bit nicer now, except I've doubled this up, so let's not do that, this should be plus plus. Not like that for some reason. That's kind of odd. 
make sure we restore any tent stuff. So A2, A4. Yeah, that's not getting... Oh, it's getting drawn there. So we got to use... Ten, move that up. Okay. And now let's draw the captured pieces. Control name label. Draw captured pieces. Let's actually do this here because that's kind of going to be useful. So let's say, so we want to start drawing them at the right. So let oh, mm. I could do this. Index in game state dot captured pieces for this player. Pieces, and I'm going to do something like okay. So let piece type is equal to type out, and then I'm going to draw the piece. doing a few times so I'm gonna pull it out into a helper. Ah this horrible jittering. Should probably have used like numbers or a boolean or something to indicate the team. This does the job at least, so uh, how do I actually make the move to make sure that I use this somewhere? Aha, so I can now just say game state dot active turn. Cool. What we called it? The opposite color, yes. So 
somewhat handy. Where do we want to draw it? So we pass in file and rank, right? So file, I think we want to start here and then move to the left. But maybe have them like overlap with each other. I think of how this looks in chess.com. So it's going to be something like 8 minus. Um, I think that will do what we need. Definitely got something weird happening there. What can I do? Okay, there's something in the console. Not drawing the dark card for some reason. Some junk out. Maybe not doing anything really stupid. Yeah. Thing with my positioning, maybe. Yeah, I just hard code something random in there. drawn as I would kind of expect So is something weird happening?
Hmm. It's odd what's happening here. Where I start committing out bits of code until I figure out what's happened. I misunderstood something about JavaScript loop in versus on stuff or something. Um, I've missed a bracket and something weird is going on. Whoa, that's not correct. Okay. Feel like I'm missing something like very, very, <laughs> very, very stupid here.
is becoming 10. Is it old 90? Is it like a string thing? Weekly type languages, I blame you. Yeah, let's just do this. In a way that actually feels more natural to me. Okay, then we're back to something a bit more sane. Um, consistently, let's use the same pattern here. happen um, four B seven B five A four B five oh an error it's not it doesn't have type it's just the name the type name anyway I think it's what we put into that array so B two A four Seven B five, A two B five, A four five. Um, interesting. So So I'm kind of abusing this code, which is for getting pieces, coordinates of stuff on the grid to just draw stuff in the UI. Because I kind of want the UI to be like aligned with the grid, or at least I can sort of leverage that to make the code a bit simpler. B4, A, B5. actually happened there. Ah. Mm. Okay, so it's done by... So what we recorded is like a white piece has been captured, for example. A white piece has been captured, so I actually need to look in the UI. I want to draw captured pieces of the opposite colour. This is not pieces captured by a player, this is pieces captured of this particular colour. I could probably name that better to reflect that.
Yeah, this mine thing is totally useless. Um, okay, that seems good. Okay, I'm quite happy with this. So, A4, B7, B5, A4, B5. Hmm. Did we log out the capture? A two, A four. B7, B5, A4, B5. Okay, so a pawn was captured. Which by my reckoning should mean... Zero through seven. That's Am I confident enough to remove my debugging code? I think I am. I'm pretty certain it's something like that. Okay, hopefully for the last time. A2, A4, famous last word. B7, B5, A4, B5. There is. There's our port. Lovely. Okay. Now I can tweak this to have these overlap. I'll make sure there's room. It would also be good to kind of sort them um, by value or something, but four, B7, B5. I was going to say, but I don't really have any excuse not to do that. A4, B5. Okay. Let's capture again. So let's do A7 to A6. Now let's do B5 to A6. Stacked up there. See, this could get like a lot, so maybe yeah, I do want to um, either have a number count by them, I don't really like, or just sort of overlay them a bit more, or make them smaller actually. Um, what to do? Okay, I'm, I'm cool with this now. So let's just say that we have done that because we kind of have special moves. Let us think about how these work. So these are just going to need to be pretty much hard coded special cases. So let's think about castling. So, if if the pieces are king, so I believe we're tracking if a piece has moved somewhere. King and it has moved. We have castling. Castling options. So it's gonna need to need to be some other code that will say like moves the rook in response to this, but we shall see. Um okay. We have it moved, so if let's say
or dot by board. Uh, seven. Or rather, current position file. No. Rank. If. And there's nothing in between, right? So, yeah, it's getting a bit hacky, but it's kind of fun for me. And and there's nothing here. Right. If this is the case, then I'm gonna add. here which is going to be moving it here so Side rook. Well, that's zero. The long side rook is not null and it hasn't moved. And one, two, three. That's one, two, three. These pieces here. It's a bit hard codey and hacky, but you know what? This is an edge case rule kind of by definition. That's the whole deal. So I believe it's here, right? I'm actually... <laughs> so you move two, and that moves past it. Yeah, I'm pretty certain that's the case. Okay, so that should be the basic logic for this. Let us check it out just in terms of... Yeah, so right now it's down here. So checks are not counted at all. So currently we can determine legal moves like, I'm not sure how long you've been following the stream by the way, so we account for this sort of deal, we also account for like pawns can take uh, diagonally, we account for like pieces being blocked, but a whole other phase is going to be, um, is a move illegal because it um, leaves you in check basically. Um, the reason I'm not accounting for that here is because I want to use this same code to figure out which pieces are being attacked on the board right like in order to determine if a king's in check I need to know if another piece sees the king um, and a piece seeing the king is kind of equivalent to them being able to move onto the king um, before you worry about like illegal moves because of check related stuff um, yeah also in casting I would need to figure out if because you can't castle into or out of check or like through check so that's a good point. I should probably add. Yeah, that would kind of need to be a special case here. Yeah, so check detection is not even in there yet. So um, once that's implemented, I can then... Yeah, I'll, I'll try and remember to wire that back into this bit of logic as well. For now, I just kind of want to see if um, okay, it's got no legal moves. That makes sense. Let's push some pawns and stuff randomly. Um, five. Uh, it doesn't help that my chess coordinate knowledge is pretty slow. Um, let's push that. Let's do b7, b6, whatever. Let's move our one, two. Okay. Let's also check still that 
Our king can't move. E1. Okay, that looks good. There's the legal moves. Let's move the knight out. G1 to F3. Nope. Oh, it's probably the... It's dark for player's turn. So let's just do... A5 to A4. Then G1 to F3. And now let's do E1. Okay, it's detected that that's a legal move. Right now, if I try and do it though, E1. Nope. Yeah, E1 to G1. It's just going to do something weird. What happened there? Oh, it's not my turn. Okay, let's move another pawn. A3, A2. Nope, A4, A3. Now let's try E1 to G1. Yeah, it's just going to move it straight across. So I need to account for this case when the move gets locked in and pop the rook over. So where's my actual make move? Um... Just castled. So if king and awesome, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm all, I've almost got the basic rules of <laughs> of chess into here. Um, the idea ultimately is to make this a Twitch overlay, so it will sit kind of up here and via the Twitch chat people will be able to pl play chess in the background of a stream. That's the ultimate goal. Um, I'm still working on the basic gameplay itself, but um, wiring it into Twitch I think will not be too hard. I basically got this text box, so it's just figuring out the Twitch API and you know feeding the same code via looking at messages. Um, so if it's the king and um legal so let's say from dot move on the same rank and equals I think this might be a castling here, so we can just say if two dot file Yeah, I mean, maybe something like this exists, but, you know, it's really just for going through the fun and exercise of doing this. I don't know, for me this is a fun little project anyway. So, actually I can say, it's kind of easier to say, if it hasn't moved and it's going to file 6, then this is a short castle. And we want to move the rook. Um, so we'll leave that back here. That's five pause. We want to okay. I don't think it's actually super important to keep track of this. We only really care. I mean, if the king's moved. 
whatever. Okay, I'll put that in there anyway to be complete. So, if we can that far, then it's short castle, otherwise it's long castle. Which would mean going to two, two, one, two, two. So. I think this is right. Uh, okay, there's a high chance I got this wrong, so I'm going to quickly just remove a lot of the other pieces. So, let's get rid of. I did something weird. Probably missed a bracket somewhere. So these line numbers, line, line numbers are kind of hard to debug because this little web-based ID throws some random ass code in here to prevent infinite loops. Um, so the line numbers don't match. Um, so what's happening is this here is undefined. How can that be the case? That's odd. Maybe something weird happened with the refresh? I don't know. Okay, so it thinks I can castle here, which clearly makes no sense. But if I do it, it's just gonna like, my rook's gonna like gobble the bishop. No, nope, the rook didn't move at all. Okay, there's definitely something wrong going on there. Away. Board. Made this little function that checks bounds and stuff, so I will try and actually use it.
Okay, yeah, I didn't check that for some reason. That explained that. Had the wrong number in there. Okay, so E1, question mark. rank. Sorry, not the most exciting code, but this logic has to go somewhere. It's kind of fiddly by nature. Okay, let's figure that out. I can't do anything crazy. I mean, it lets me put myself in front of the queen, but as we've already established, check checking. It's not yet being checked, so F1 to H3. Move that guy, now E1. Aha! We have the castling option. Let's move our... This, this down randomly, and now let's go to E1, question mark. Now let's try E1, G1. Okay, so my little rip dude is not moving for some reason, so it which detects castling it was a king and it hasn't yet moved two file is six it should be the case Castle. Castle. Let's try this again quickly. F1, H3, A7, A5. Nope. A, A5. E1. E1. To G1. Printed that out. This did not. Ah. This happened here. So I could just do this later on. Kill the stream entirely. Um, okay. So I think this is more or less correct now. So I can go F1 to H3. Pick that up. A8 to A5, move that down. One. What is going on there? Hey Vader, thanks so much for the follow, really appreciate it. So, what is happening here? This is very, very, very odd to me. Um, something in this logic here. Sure, what weird state things are getting into. This no, E one. Okay. F one. H three. E one. Very weird. Okay. Um. E1. Okay. Moment of truth. E1. It's G1. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's successful. Okay. Let's try. Let's try the uh, the long castle. So C1 to D2. Just move that up there. A8 to A5. 
D1, 2, C, 2. Okay, those are the possible moves. I think that's correct. If my memory of how long casting works is right, you always move the king over 2, right? Um, A5 to H5. D1. Okay. You want to see one? Is that right? <laughs> I'm doubting myself now, like the castle position. That's right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> when you get your head too into this, you can you can definitely get screwed up. Okay, that's castling. And while we're on the subject, let's search for. Let's implement this. Should hopefully be a little bit easier. So the rule is: capturing pawn must be on its fifth rank. Capture pawn must be on an adjacent file and must have just moved two squares in a single move. Ah. So it has to have literally just moved. That's interesting. Um. So we need to so it's not just it hasn't moved more than once it's the move, the move it literally just happened i didn't even know that was the rule to be honest see how much of a chess noob i am so we need to track some information which would let us know did this literally just move um probably the simplest way to do that is to record something like This could be handy anyway, right? Because you often highlight the previous, the last move made in a chess game. So, when I make the move, I'm going to say game state dot. Keep track of this stuff. Game state dot last move from equals from. Let's move to. Two equals two. So we have another weird case for the pawn. So oh, this is also weird because this is another case where our legal move generator needs to. Um, queue this up as a legal move and then when the move is made we need to detect that it actually happened and uh, remove the piece that we captured. So yeah we could probably avoid this by like somehow tagging the moves with extra attributes when we're enumerating the legal moves like hey this is a casting move and then we could just refer to that later but that actually seems like more trouble than it's worth. So this is where we create the pawn moves. So we have moving forwards. Uh, so this is one square. I keep calling them tiles. Also, the pawn should have moved two steps in moment. It can't go to e3. Oh, it can, right? Like it just. Oh, yeah. Okay, so it has to have been its first move. Yeah, I guess so, right? Because it's... 
immediately after the enemy pool makes a double step move, yeah, so we can't step forward once and then twice. So we need to check not yeah. I think that's gonna be ca that's gonna be covered by how uh, I'm planning to do this here. So here's diagonal captures and then we have one percent. So think about this. So we need to check two possibilities, right? Like the pawn sort of um, to our left and to our right. So I can say if uh, board A bug that was latent in there. I had to check for a while. Okay. Right. So this is the piece immediately to our right. I'm going to say if Annoying, I now need to pass in this game state stuff. Um, Mean the second parameter is not really needed. Just want to pull it out because I refer to board all over the place. It'd be a pain not to. But I don't need to pass the board in as a separate parameter. That seems kind of crazy. Okay. Okay, and I think we have I think we have what we need. So if dot last move to actually don't need to pull this out just yet. Last move to is not null and game state dot last move to dot Frank equals Frank dot file equals Let's nest this if actually. So we're checking here, basically if a move has been made, this will be null at the very start of the game, I guess. And the last move that was made moved a piece onto our current rank, which kind of should be the case, right? It should be, that black should be here. Then there are two cases, either if it's on the file immediately to our right,
I'm trying to figure out the most direct and simple way to like encode these conditions, basically. So what I'm thinking is we can say if a piece just moved two pieces forwards and it's a pawn, and that was the last move of the game, then we can say that it's kind of a candidate for this, right? Um, So this means a piece has moved up to our rank. This means it didn't change file. Um, actually, let me kind of do this. Dot and get piece at. And the absolute value of this equals two, meaning he's moved into our rank. We can change file. He's moved to ranks. rank dot type pawn okay so piece moved into our rank it didn't change file it just moved two ranks and it's a pawn <laughs> then I think uh, that it's a candidate right so um, So we could also do something like and something kind of like this. last move was into our rank, the last move was into a file immediately adjacent file we didn't change file well, this is redundant, right? if it's a pawn and it just moved two, then it must have been its first move, okay If this is true, then the last move was a pawn moving into Okay. I believe that's correct. Almost certainly there's something wrong there. If that's the case, then push. We're going to add the option to composant take that thing. So it's going to be the x offset. Whew. 
This is really ugly. Um, I think this will may work, unless there's a bug here. So let's... Okay, let's put my corns back and let's try this out. Okay, so how are we going to set this up? So let's put so let's put our pawn here, and then move this one here, and then we should be able to take like that. So um, B two goes to B four. Yep. Uh, let's move our random pawn. B no A seven goes to A six. Okay, whatever. Um. Now B. 4 goes to b5, now, let's see what that can, yeah, that can just move straight forward right now, so, c7, where are you allowed to go, okay, you can go there, c7 to c5, now b5, question mark, oh, okay, that did not work, um, <laughs> hmm, Let's try something else. Okay. This is kind of annoying to debug. Um, okay, we can move them down here. Just going to lock this out. refresh this whole deal now okay so a1 to a no, a2 to a4 um seven to six a4 to a5 um b7 to b5 a5 question mark So here is the game state. Can I drag this up? I can. Okay, now let's try and sort of manually go through this same logic. So, did the rank change? Or did the rank match our rank? I think that's correct. So This is probably not the most riveting material, but <laughs> thanks if you're bearing with me. Um, okay, so they moved on to our rank. That should be true. I should probably have also output. Let's do this again. So, A2 to A4, A7 to H5, A5 to A5, B7 to B5. Okay. And now, where are we? A5, question mark. Okay. One percent check. Okay. So, this is our rank. The last move to rank is equal to that. Correct. Okay. 
the last move to file one I'll file is zero I believe this should be correct last move from rank oh that's wrong okay that was probably it let's check this anyway So, A2, A4. A2, A4. Um, H7, H5. A4, A5. B7, B5. A5, question mark. Yes, okay, it's there. That worked, kind of. Appears to have worked. So, okay, so now it realizes that that's on passant move. So one thing you'll notice we didn't specify is the capturing pawn must be on its fifth rank because that's actually kind of implied by these other things. Like if we're next to a pawn that just moved two, then it kind of means we must be on our fifth rank, you know, unless the pawn started in a different location. But in this case, they always start on the seventh. So that's always the case. Okay. So now we've queued it up, the next step is when we make the move to detect. If we just... En passanted. Is en passant a verb? I'm not sure. Okay, so if equals equals pawn and ah and we didn't capture anything and to dot file. Right, so this means we move diagonally without immediately capturing something. that's the only case that can happen so oh another caveat is that the square we're moving into needs to be empty from this on right um, so if that Right, so so in this case, we're checking that this tile is empty, right? So the file is this file indeed, and the rank is our rank plus whatever forward direction is. So this forward direction thing accounts for the fact that pawns for light and dark go in different directions, like up or down the board. Um, okay, I believe that should be good. Oh, it might also be good to check that if I... 
do something like H2H4, then that should mean that now our A5 can't form the sun. Cool, that works. Um, okay. Let us um where are we? This means we captured a pawn. the pawn and we're just going to clear out the thing we captured and that's going to be in the file we move into and it's in our current rank right Okay, it's a bit spaghettified, a bit messy. I'd love to see someone else's chess code. I've never actually implemented this before, so I'm sure there are very clever ways to do this. Um, B254. Okay, H7 to H5. B4 to B5. Um, A7 to A5. B5 question mark. Oh. oh, that's no good. Why did this happen? I need to copy this again to see what actually is. Nine two one three. Oh, that's type null, and I should do just equals equals null. Okay, fingers crossed. So B two to B four. H seven to H five. B4 to B5, A7 to A5, B5 question mark. Yes, we can take it. Let's do it. B5 to A6. There we go. Took it. Pieces in our little inventory there. Awesome. That's the sun. Um. So. You know what, maybe I will do pawn promotion and then we will call it a day at that point. I think that's a pretty reasonable amount of stuff we've done. I mean, the check stuff is actually going to be way cleaner, I think, than all of this stuff, because this is so specific to positions and fiddling around and checking indices and relative positions and states and stuff, whereas check is a bit more nicely defined. The one thing this will require us to do is to be able to kind of which we don't do right now, is to say, if I made this move, what would the board state be? And then check stuff about that future state, um, which we've managed to avoid doing so far. Um, but we'll get into that when the time comes. And I don't think that'd be too hard. It's just a little bit fiddly. We just need to like clone the state of the board. Uh, pawn promotion. So this is interesting. So. What even is the chess notation for promoting stuff? Um. 
Pull promotion. CD Queen. Okay, so if and we hit the end of the board, mm, actually, let me. So if the information indicator was specified, we do this. If So if it's not in this list, then okay, something like that. Let's can test out by removing a load of pieces from the board entirely. So let's get rid of. Sorry, I meant to get rid of some of these dark pieces. Get rid of dark red pawns as well. Refresh. Something very janky with this ID. Okay. The sneeze, excuse me. A two to A four. Um H eight to H seven. Hey, Razor and Nutso, thanks so much for the follow. Let's push our dude up a little bit more. A four to A five. Let's do H seven to H eight. Let's just wiggle this right back and forth. Okay. A Five to a six, h eight to h seven, a six to a seven, a seven h eight. So now a seven can move up. A seven to a eight. Expected promotion indicator. That's correct. So what if we make it something invalid, like g? Invalid, that's okay. But if we make it queen, oh, My error there. Damn it, I have to move these things all around again. So A2 to A4. H to A8, 4 to A5. Having mouse controls would actually be pretty handy here. H7 to H8. A5 to A6. H7 to H7. 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 H7.
8 again. A 7 to A8. Expected promotion indicator. G is not valid. Q is. Awesome. There's our lovely Queenie. In place there. I'm going to assume the other ones work. Um, maybe they don't, but... Uh, you know. Mostly we're promoting to Queens anyway, aren't we? Okay. Poor promotion. Okay, we're going about two and a half hours. We have done all of this stuff. We've also done a kind of refactor here, which I'm going to put in there because it makes me feel like I've been more productive. I'm sure there are still ways to make this game logic a bit more elegant, but ultimately it's like, what, 300 lines of code? So, yeah, maybe there's a nicer pattern to handle some of this. Also got some unnecessary junk in here. To be honest, I'm pretty happy with this. I mean, it more or less reads top to bottom, and it kind of just reflects the kind of necessary logic of this, as far as I can tell. So I'm pretty much okay with this, and we've now got all the special case rules, and the check stuff can be done pretty much a lot more cleanly, I think. Um, yeah, but I think we have a very good chance of implementing all of this stuff next time. So our game will be kind of fully functional. Um, Twitch integration. Yeah, I'm not really sure how easy or difficult that will be. Um, I've never done it before. I think Twitch runs on top of IRC. So it'd be like an IRC API. I've got a kind of weird idea, which is, can I make this entire thing run in the browser, like off of a local file without even needing to host this anywhere? Uh, like with no backend basically and just have the client talk to the twitch api just in like front-end javascript i think that's pretty doable and that would be nice in that people could just download it or i could just if it needs to be hosted for some weird <laughs> cause reason or whatever i could uh you know security related stuff i could host it in just purely statically um and let people like pass in their Twitch bot API keys like through a parameter somewhere, like in their OBS embeds or something. Yeah, so that's kind of what I'll play around with next time. I'll finish off the rules. We'll have it actually detect like end states of the game and stuff. I mean, honestly, I think we're through most of the hairy stuff already. And from here, it'll be relatively plain sailing. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Thanks for the new followers. Hope you enjoyed this, and I will. Catch you all next time. Bye-bye.